right now, uh, we have Tony Gallardo. And Tony Gallardo, I, I gotta say, I'm excited to see this. I've heard you talking about Fusion and how much you love it. So he's talking about Fusion. And uh, let's take, take a look at it. Thanks, Chris. Well, thanks guys for coming out. As you know, I love Fusion. It's been a great um, program. And so today, I just kind of want to introduce you to Fusion, if you will, from specifically if you're coming from like After Effects. And maybe you're curious about you know, what is it? How does it work? Um, it's just, it's pretty awesome. That's all I got to say. And I'm done. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> um, there's a couple things that are great about it. You know, um, first of all, it's free. So what's stopping you? Get out there, download it, just give it a try. Uh, another thing is that a lot of the, the tools that it has, very robust, uh, you know, After Effects requires a lot of plugins to really kind of boost it up and, and bring some really cool features to it. It's native in Fusion. You know, you just got to get in there and start playing with it. So a lot of the cool element style 3D um, effects you can do in Fusion natively, no plugins required. So I just want to show you the interface and maybe we'll kind of walk through like how do we keyframe? You know, how do we move something? How do we animate something? How do we make something uh, halfway decent? So here's just a couple of quick things that I've just been experimenting with, working with 3D and replicating some stuff, um, 3D text, um, just kind of seeing what, what's possible and what can be done, particles, replicators, um, that type of stuff. So, you know, a lot of the same things that you like to do in After Effects, you can definitely do um, in a node-based system. So there you go, some fun stuff. Let me just show you that one of the assets that we're going to bring in, I actually created it in Fusion in 3D. So I just want to show you, you can make it in 3D. It's just a sphere. And another cool thing about uh, what Blackmagic has done is they just kind of included in this bin here uh, a bunch of presets that you can kind of look at and deconstruct. And so they got some cool little motion graphic elements, um, some lens flares, some creators. So take a look, explore. All I did was grab this uh, car paint shader that they provided threw it on and gave it a little bit of displacement. So you can see that's pretty much, so I'll just render that out and we'll go ahead and bring that in. But before we do that, just look at the interface. So there's primarily like three main areas. You got your viewers, much like your comp view and After Effects up on the top. You can add viewers, so you can just kind of make a floating viewers and, and you can have as many viewers as you want. Um, below is the flow, so that's where our nodes are at and that's where you, you, know, you visually see your layers, if you will. And then you can also have like a timeline. So there's a timeline that exists just like in After Effects. You've got your spline view as well. Um, if you like working with the curve editor in After Effects, you're going to love the spline view. The spline view has so many features. You can really manipulate and go crazy um, on all of your keyframes. And I wish I could have a whole episode just talking about the spline view. And then after that, to the right is your tool palette. So in After Effects, um, or most layer based, um, systems, you have a layer inside of like a container, which is a timeline, and you twirl <laughs> down to get transform, ro rotation, opacity, that type of thing. So it's a little different in, in Fusion and in, in node-based. So if you want a feature, you just add it. So if you need it, you add it. So you need some position, rotation, scale, you add a transform node. So when you select that node, or any node for that matter, up on this side in the tool palette is where all the parameters are at. They all kind of show up there, right? So let's bring in some assets here. So we got our blob, and then we're going to bring in our fire. All right, so here we go. We've got, we've got two elements that we've created. I could talk forever about the difference between nodes and, and layers, but really, in the layer-based, you're adding a bunch of layers into a container, like a timeline. And the sum of that is what gets viewed in the comp view. Um, and layer order does matter, but sometimes it doesn't matter. In Fusion, in node-based, you are building one thing after another, right? So you, you add something, and then you add something after that. So whatever you add affects everything before it. So we've got two elements, two layers. We have a little blob, and then we've got this little fire element that goes on top. So we've got to merge them together. So think of it as foreground and background. So you've got to put it into a pipeline, right? So you merge two layers together. Now, you can only merge two layers at a time. And it does kind of feel a little limiting at first, but it's, it's, it's really not and it, it kind of gives you a, a new way of controlling your layers as well. It's kind of like um, a global parenting. So in After Effects, you want to activate parenting you know, between two layers. You, you, have to turn, you have to tell it, dude, that you were going to be a child in this layer. And in node-based, it's kind of inherent, mostly. So I'm going to add a transform node, right? 
Let's view that. So now as I move this one transform node, it's moving everything, so the blob and the fire that we, we brought in. So it's kind of acting as a parent, if you will, of everything before it. And same thing for, for like if I added a blur. This blur is pretty much acting like an adjustment layer. So it blurs everything that, that's coming before it. All right, so let's animate this real quick. So we can go to the timeline just so you can see. Here's our transform. We're going to go to around 10. And how do we animate? How do we set keyframes? Well, you can come over here to your tool palette, double click on the center. Now I've made a keyframe at frame 10, and it visually shows me now that it's green. So I know there's a keyframe. So if I step off that frame, it goes to blue. So I still know there's a keyframe, but I'm not parked on the keyframe. So I move back to one frame. There we go. I'm also going to animate the, uh, the size. Go back to the beginning. So here's my two keyframes. Let me make this one view. Got to move this back. Going to scale it. And be prepared to be riveted with amazing animation. Yeah. So we've moved on the x-axis. But you know, just so you can get the idea, there's a timeline. There's layers. It's there. And let's step into the spine view real quick, because we don't want to have a linear movement. Uh, one of the cool things that I, I figured out a couple weeks ago was in After Effects, I love the tilde key. Hit the tilde key, go full screen. Did not know it existed in Fusion, but it does. F4. So F4, full screen. You can really get inside and go crazy with all your pixels. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and sh hit Shift S, kind of smooth these out. Just uh, real quick, go to our size, do the same thing. Move these over a little bit. So just real simple, simple animation. Nothing crazy. All right. So I wanted to show you guys something else real quick. What are the foundational things in, in, in After Effects that you use? It's a solid and mask, right? You use a solid for everything. You want to add a vignette, add a solid. You want to maybe add some color to something or shape. It's a solid, right? You want to add a filter. It's a solid. So what's the equivalent in Fusion? Well, it's the background tool. The background node makes a solid. Yay. Um, but it can also do a lot of other things as well. So it's not just a solid creator. You can, you can make gradients, four color gradients. Um, but one of the cool things that I really like about it is that you have the custom gradient. So you can really come in here and make any type of custom gradient that you want in one node. And if you start to mess around and play around with it, you can start to do cool things uh, by animating the offset, putting things like on, uh, let me select this node like on ping pong here. So now you're kind of creating these cool little waves based on a gradient map. And you know you can adjust this. And if you want to change it. So whatever you really need, you can kind of adjust this and make cool little like displacement maps as well. So based on how you adjust your, um, your gradient map, you can get different results. So that's how you would create a solid in Fusion. The next thing is, is masks. So they're very similar as they are to After Effects. So I'm going to create a, a mask real quick. It took me forever to design that mask, by the way. Um, so how do we move mask around? This is just some things that I like real quick. But you can hold the Alt key down and click anywhere in your viewer, and the mask will move. Right. So if you want to rotate the mask, hit the T key for twist, and the mask will rotate. Now, wherever you click, that's where the anchor point for that rotation is. And same thing for scale. I can hit S, scale the mask. If I want to scale it from the top right, I can scale it this way. I can select just certain parts of the mask. So if I'm rotoscoping and I'm animating and I only have a couple little features that I want to move, but I don't want to put my mouse right over the mask, um, you know, you can move it again, holding the Alt key down, or scale it, and rotate. So just some cool things that you can do. You can also feather based on each point or each vertice. So I think that comes in handy. Fusion has a lot of what they call modifiers, but it's really just a way of adding more power, more features to a certain parameter. So in this case, I've got a text. I've typed it in here. I've right-clicked in the style text. And you can see right there it says follower. I've already created a follower, so let's step into the modifier. And all it is really is just a sequential text animator, right? No biggie. But what's really cool is say you're designing something, you're, you're creating this text for somebody, and you want to try something different. Well, instead of duplicating that layer or duplicating that node, 
Up here, they've got these things, what they call settings, but they're really just like a storage bank or uh, a versioning system. So you can come over here and go to S1, and I've already animated something in there. Let me uh, scale this up. And then in S2, I've animated something different. S3. And let's say that I'm working in a team environment, right? I got somebody working um, across the country. And I would like to share this with them. So I can copy that, that node. So select the node and copy it. Go to uh, text edit and paste it. Right then and there, you can paste it. Email that to anybody. They can grab it, copy it, paste it in their flow. And away they're going. All the animation is all there. Everything is just like that. And you can do multiple nodes. It doesn't have to be just one node. So that's something that's kind of cool to be able to share, to debug if you want to debug, or just want to share this with a producer, pick one, and away they go. So I created a background, and it's in the settings. Let's drop it in. Uh, this is the Ben. I know I showed you guys earlier, but it's a great way if you can build little modules, little filters, and just save it here. And it's available to you anytime. Use it in any project you want to. So here, let's do another merge. So we have, this is our, the final of our pipeline. We're going to add a background to it. So take the output of the transform, put it over the, over the gradient. We can view that. Now we've got our little fireball over a background. And I'm going to add CC, kind of just give it a little bit of pop, because I don't like it so flat. OK, so now let's, uh, let's just pretend that um, I have somebody else working in Fusion. They made some text animation, and they sent this to me in a text file. So I'm going to copy this, go back to Fusion, paste it in. There it is. I'm going to merge it over, view that merge. Now I want to go to my modifiers and uh, look and see which one, which animation I like. And I like that one. Let's change this text. Faster together. All right, so that's great. But what if I wanted to have this text match the movement of my fireball, right? I just don't want it sitting over my fireball. I wanted to match. So how do we connect that? How do we bring those two together? Well, let's add a transform node. And I can right click on the center here. And it comes up with all these different features. So I can modify it with an expression. I could use shake or perturb, which is very similar to like a wiggle. Um, but I want to connect it to. I want to connect it to path one position. So now my text is connected and following exactly the same uh, animation curve that my fireball is. And I want to do the same thing for my size. So I'm going to say connect to transform size. So now the size matches. That's great. So I want to move it. I don't like. I don't want it to be there. So I'm going to add another transform right after the text. And I can just move it wherever I want to. And it's still obeying the connected, basically like an expression, like you've connected the two points together. They'll still obey. But now it's in the position where I want it to be. And for some reason, if the uh, client sees this and says, we love it, but uh, we want to change the position of the text. We don't like it there. We want to move it to the front of the fireball. Well, just come over here to S2, move it over. <coughs> And then three days later, they say, no, put it back. We want to go back the other way. It's right there. So that way, you're kind of hedging and building some ways of going back, leaving some breadcrumbs. Um, or maybe you want to give this as option. So look at this way. Look at a version one. Look at version two. So that's something that I think is kind of cool, a little time saver. I would like to put a little heat intensity at the back of that fireball. So I've built a little heat intensity package, if you will. I took a, a, a color correction node. And obviously, as you can see, it's just blown out the whole fireball, right? So I want, I want to be able to isolate it to a certain part of that fireball. So how would you do that in Fusion? Well, um, you can essentially just output this, this fireball, pump it in a couple of bitmaps. And all I'm really doing is giving it a light wrap effect. So if you guys are familiar with add using light wrap, and I'm modifying it with some fast noise, controlling it with the rectangle, and then uh, controlling it with the alpha from the fireball, and with another bitmap, 
So now I've isolated exactly where I want that color correction to happen. And let me plug this in. So let's get, so there's the overblown fireball. And now let's control it with our bitmap. There we go. So now we've just isolated to just that part of the fireball. Let's add some glow. All right, here's some glow. I'm going to pump the intensity up just a little bit. There we go. So great, so now we've got some cool looking intensity at the end. And of course, I don't want to stop there. I want to keep going and add more. Somebody out there on the interwebs made this really cool heat wave plugin. So I wanted to see, can that be done? Can that be mimicked inside of Fusion? And it can. So here we go. This has got this big spider web of mess right here. What have we done? Let me pipe this in so we can see what we've done. All right, so now we've got this cool looking heat wave with some wisps in the background. So what have I done? Well, I've basically just made a fractal noise. It's called fast noise infusion. Put a mask on it and just repurposed and reused this one fractal map. So if I want to change like the heat signature, if you will, all I have to do is just one fractal map, but just distorting it different ways, redistorting it, adding blur, um, and just adding multiple uh, distortions, you can come up with some pretty interesting effects. All right, so let's just quickly RAM preview that. You can see that it looks like my heat distortion is kind of just being static. So we can do the same thing. We can connect this mask to our animation path. Real easy. So connect to path one position, and the same thing for the size. Connect to transform size. And that's it. Now it's following exactly along with our fireball. We've got our text positioned right where we want it. And if the client comes back and says, no, go back to position two, well, we just go to S2. And there it is. So that is just a real quick way of looking at starting, bringing some assets in, bringing some layers in, um, and uh, doing some simple animation. Obviously, you know, jump in there, explore. The spline editor is just insane. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with the spline editor. Duplicating your keyframes, putting a bounding box around them, really warping and transforming your keyframes so you have ultimate control of how you want your animation to come out. So hopefully you guys can see a little quick overview of how Fusion works, how do you animate, how do you add keyframes, how do you connect things together, um, and just go out there and explore, try it.